I thought I would follow up on this dialogue discussion that's been going on about gateway concepts, threshold concepts. The one that I would want to identify is the way that information stuff has seemed to be, I guess, created in Western culture. And it was a slow, we'll call it a two-phase evolution. One, the, the kind of principle of the notion of information as a transpersonal reality, that is, as a, as a substance or commodity which retains its identity independent of the particular person. The notion that there is such a thing as knowledge or information and this stuff could be written down and now retain itself and exist, not only independent of the person who wrote it, but kind of make people substitutable. The notion that any person who picks it up now also has that information and quotes that knowledge. The notion of a kind of information or knowledge stuff as implied by literacy was the first principle and I think it, it is alphabetic literacy and the notion of translation right that is part of I, I would argue that the rise of monotheism even that monotheism was implied in language translation which was made possible through the discovery of the alphabet okay all this is a, a history I think the the issue of how is information then made radically into like a cult where people come to believe in this thing called information that is independent of people. Uh, it was the telegraph, right? And the telegraph is the principle of electricity that then gets amplified out in now the electric age. But the, the telegraph, uh, you know, for McLuhan, I mean, so, for, for many people, the telegraph really was one of the most significant inventions in history. I mean, some people would suggest that it was the the alphabet, the printing press, and the telegraph. The telegraph, in its, you know, one of its main characteristics, I guess we'll say, is that it separated transportation and communication. Is the notion of information as some substance uh, was was always bound to a kind of transportation in the sense that the person or the text or the carrier pigeon or whatever it is, the letter, it had to be somewhere and it could only, the, the information could only go as fast as the messenger could, as the carrier could, or as the person could travel. With the telegraph, the information as sort of bound up time got separated from space and we had this ephemeral non-substance now again it's not even caught within the confines of spatiality and movement through distance and loca location right we no longer have this some kind of odd notion of information stuff has occurred and now people, I think, are in some kind of, some kind of cult about they they believe in information, they're interested in information, and they think life is about information. And it's not to deny the usefulness of having access to information, but there's such a difference between knowing that there's information out there to be accessed and being a knowledgeable, wise, and cultivated person. See, knowledge. And, and real, see, I mean, the question would be, I mean, let's get to this issue of, is there a knowledge stuff or an information stuff that retains its value independent of the mind that would know it, acquire it, deal with it? Um, I mean, you can play with this. There's so many different ways to cut at it. I mean, and I'm, I'm sorry if this is going to seem like I'm sort of swinging from ling uh, swinging from limb to limb, but I'm trying to keep all this together. I mean, try to think of all the different ways that this plays out. Now, certainly mathematics, we do want basics of mathematics to be teachable and ideally, right? Uh, I mean, I think that's, the, in, in the principle, we say that mathematics are 
independent of people, and there's so, people are substitutable. And I think that's what we mean by the meanings of mathematical terms and mathematical references. But in everyday life, it, it really just isn't that way. It matters who says it, where they say it, when they say it, how they say it. All of these things are part of, quotes, the information. And the, the notion of, again, of, of having the right information or more information, these can some way be deferral of, of self-cultivation or of growing oneself. Um, I think it's interesting, you know, we shot some of these videos uh, in the last couple of weeks over the new captioning service that is available on YouTube and how much it still struggles, the computer does, identifying what particular words are throughout that acoustical stream that comes out of someone's mouth. I think what's interesting about that is that even in the text form, I was, I was thinking about this, that the CAPTCHA services that come into play if you too often try to uh, give a comment on someone's video, it will make you read this uh, little configuration of letters, and it obviously is able to fool computer bots that are trying to do an auto-reply. So there must be, again, some sort of capacity of a person, a genuine person, to differentiate quotes information from not information. This, this whole notion of what is information, I mean, what, what is the information that's there when it says no smoking, that is a no smoking sign, if you're a non-smoker versus you're a smoker? See, I mean, I think there's, there's funny, there's different kinds of information, but this, this notion of information as an entity or a substance or as a commodity which retains its value or its its essential meaning independent of people and thereby makes people substitutable it's very odd I think that this it has become the dominant uh, sort of ideology maybe in education um, I, th I think people Savvy, savvy people, obviously, right? I think savvy people realize that uh, different books become appropriated by the different people who read them. Really great authors kind of mean different things as they get configured and contextualized and made relevant to various uh, intersections of lines of research. And this, again, this, there's a very different notion of information that is operating than I think the one that seems to operate in most of the discourse or most of our logic or the way that we think about things. Um, I think our, our, our natural way or seemingly natural way of thinking about information has come from both literacy and now uh, telegraphic uh, orientations and it is interesting to think of how differently we would think of information or could think of information if we just focus on those kinds of information where the people are not in any way substitutable, right? I mean, you can walk up to your significant other or your loved one and pat them on the butt and they could say, ooh, thank you, you lover, and maybe even give you a kiss, but you can't be a stranger and see that, and then walk up to that person, oh, I see that you like butt patting, and walk up there and, you know, have at it, uh, the person will not give you a kiss, they'll go, no, you're wrongly related to me, that information, that, you know, that sequence of exchanges wasn't just a to whom it may concern message. Uh, this notion of information, of to whom it may concern, where functional anonymity is the key, it maybe is hiding the radical non-interchangeability of people and how cultivating oneself, growing oneself, making oneself non-substitutable is the key. It's not about getting more information or having more access to more information. It's to what degree are you growing a self who is non-substitutable? Okay, thanks.